discussion uh, about the challenging situation uh, or issues in Europe. And basically, uh, we know that international basic safety standards follow International Commission for Radiation Protection principles and multi multidisciplinary approach. And that justification and optimization are two basic pillars of radiation protection, where in justification we need to weigh benefits against detriment. There is genetic, generic justification and justification of individual exposures. And then the other pillar is optimization, where we need to use appropriate equipment with appropriate techniques and parameters, and the role of medical physicists is there extremely important. We know that uh, in justification, as I said, the expected benefits to individuals and to society outweigh the harm, and we need to perform only needed and most appropriate procedures, where again in optimization management of the radiation dose commensurate with the medical purpose. Now, Regarding the legal aspects of justification, appropriate justification and optimization of all procedures involving patient ionizing exposure are the essential elements of good and safe clinical practice, and we are all witnessing the significant rise in the use of CT in developed countries over the recent decades, and it's a particular subject of concern due to its increased availability over-utilization and suboptimal justification and optimization practices. In Europe, in European Union, so-called Basic Safety Standards Directive created 10 years ago legal requirements for medical exposures to be justified. So this is now, this has to be incorporated into uh, legal systems of all EU member states that all um, exposures to radiological procedures need to be justified to ensure that health benefit outweighs the individual detriment that the exposure might cause. If we look at unscared data uh, over the last 35 years, we see that the numbers of um, medical radiological examination procedures are growing. Uh, considerably in all this period, and this applies particularly to CT and interventional radiology procedure that are responsible for the huge proportion of collective doses that population is getting. Uh, computed tomography there is very uh, important because the number of procedures and the collective doses have risen markedly, the number of procedures has increased by about 80% and collective dose by around 70% in the last 15 years. And while there is evidence of some reduction in the average dose per, per procedure because of better CT machines, iterative reconstruction and other improvements, use of computed tomography continues to grow. And for instance, data from German um, radiation safety agency showed that nowadays CT is responsible for almost 70% of those that patients get and then uh, angiography and vascular interventional procedures to additional 17. So CT is very important there. We also need to say that approaches that were focused on individual exposures are historical. We now need to look at the context for exposures, the clinical purpose for imaging, whether it is screening. There is now big movement in Europe to do lung cancer screening for early signs of lung cancer in a particular subset of uh, population, both male and female, or whether uh, uh, imaging is used for initial diagnosis, or like in cases for oncology, for staging, treatment planning, treatment assessment, and follow-up. And many patients experience all or some of these within their clinical pathway. So the approach to justification must take into consideration the context of this exposure within the clinical pathway and the range of exposures with the clinical pathway, and the individual exposures shouldn't be considered in isolation. However, 
We need to be well aware of the role and knowledge of the referrer and practitioner within the justification process. This is of paramount um, importance and basically in EU member states, practitioners, meaning radiologists, are responsible for all vettings of referrals and can reject inappropriate referrals. So where multiple referrers and practitioners are involved, good communication and agreed approaches are essential. Uh, we have Euroatom Basic Safety Standards Directive, International Atomic Energy Agency and WHO Bonn Call for Action, and which was translated in Eurosafe Imaging Call for Action. We have ICRP guidelines supporting justification for generic clinical conditions. And the WHO has identified the reasons for inappropriate utilization because there is a lack of awareness about radiation protection. Very important is insufficient access to guidelines at the point of care, over-reliance on imaging and practicing of defensive medicine. There is also excessive demand for imaging from patients and specialists and lack of consultation with specialists. So, even if we have published guidelines, and now uh, European Society of Radiology, together with American College of Radiology and some others, was working on this for many years and decades, if we have those guidelines in paper, they really need to be translated into something that is accessible to practitioners at the point of care in hospitals and integrated in hospital information systems. And that's basically what we have with this clinical decision support eye guide which basically delivers imaging referral guidelines for imaging services directly into physician referral workflows using a web services integration by scoring the referral based on anonymous patient data this was given to several african countries for trying period, so we have ESR imaging referral guidelines based on American College of Radiology appropriateness criteria that were Europeanized. Then we have this clinical decision support software, which is owned by European Society of Radiology, and it's incorporated in evidence-based clinical decision support for 2,300 clinical indications, which are basically evidence-based practice recommendations developed by world leading radiological societies. We have subspecialty groups that uh, uh, upgrade these, um, the content of these clinical decision support annually, and there are dedicated guidelines for different areas in radiology. So as I said, there are 2,300 indications with associated exams, which include appropriateness ratings for defined patient groups. So when referrers put in clinical questions, they get the answer, whether the imaging is not appropriate with grades one to three, whether they may be appropriate with grades four to seven, or are appropriate with grades seven to nine, and in addition, they get information about potential alternative examinations that may be more appropriate than this. So this is how it looks, you have to uh, select uh, what you want to do uh, to image which part of the body and put clinical scenarios. As I said, there are 2,300, and then you receive a feedback, for instance, that MRI is much more appropriate than CT in particular um, clinical situation. The elements of a good referral are whether the test has already been done, is the necessary information provided, is imaging needed, and clinical decision support provides all this, and what is the right test. As I said, it provides appropriateness of different modalities for clinical indications, so it's very useful for referrers and helps radiologists. From the perspective of radiologist department, at least in Europe, we have huge volume of examinations and if radiologists need to justify and approve every referral, this is really not in practice possible at a consistently high standard in, in clinical practice and there are often unclear or missing information, avoidable delays because of consultations, changing requests, 
sending patients, patients back. And we do see this variability in Europe. Dina Husseini just mentioned the project we are doing in seven different European countries and quality of these referrals differs considerably. Also, on the perspective of radiology de department, if we duplicate exams, really unnecessary exams use up valuable staff, technical and financial resources. We d do this new European project based on a smaller audit that was done in Luxembourg, one of the smallest European countries in 2019, they have seen that there is a huge proportion of inappropriate requests for CT, 39% and 21% of MRIs, that other exams would have been appropriate in almost two-thirds of CT and over 50% of MR cases, and that huge number of patients in their referrals lacked clinical uh, information to assess appropriateness and therefore European Commission w wanted uh, to see how the situation is in Europe and we have as European Society of Radiology applied for this project and got it which is called European Coordinated Action on Improving Justification of Computed Tomography. We use it in seven countries in Europe with 145 participating centers these are in Finland, Denmark, Belgium, Estonia, Slovenia, Hungary, and Greece. And basically, we, this lasts for three years and will finish in one year. We were collecting information about justification of CT examinations in Europe. We developed methodology for auditing justification. We carry audits of justification and then this is, I'm not going to go into details, but it's very complex and we had two auditors per country using iGUIDE. We looked for completeness and clarity of reasons for exam appropriateness and existence of more appropriate alternative exams and we used this audit form where all auditors used iGUIDE. We will present the guidance on the implementation of justification in healthcare systems together with Steve Ebdon-Jackson with this proposed guidelines document outline and we will have a workshop in Luxembourg in September this year where the final results of this project will be presented where we will discuss results with member states and identify opportunities for further action. So that would be short presentation on European situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Boris. Uh, now